Hi, my name is Shaurav Das, I head up the practice development team in Alcon India. We are five of us and collectively 70 years of experience in eye care. And what we do in this organization is help practices integrate any advanced technologies and procedures through staff training, patient education and various practice development initiatives. What I'm going to share today is some very quick pearls through which you can swiftly create or upgrade your practice into a patient centric one. So let's get started with the very basic thing. What do you mean by a patient centric practice? We all have heard about the Ritz Carlton story and how the Ritz Carlton people would go out of their way to help their guests and bring that smile on their face. And even, even the people, even the guests would really vouch on their approach. Similar concept when applied to healthcare becomes a patient centric practice, a patient centric care. Now let me peel this up a little bit more very specific to eye care. So we'll divide this into two part a traditional versus a newer one a newer approach. A traditional approach would think well I give them the best of the outcomes what more do they need? Well the newer approach actually talks about that outcome is just a part of it what really matters the, is the entire check in to check out experience. Again let's go by the traditional method one would think why do I need to give options to my patients? I know the best. Well, that's true. You know, you know the best. But the newer approach actually talks about how you can involve the entire patients and the caregiver in the entire decision making process, getting their visual needs and then take a firm decision. Traditionally, one would think I'm investing so much in the o o operation theater, the OT setup. What more do I need? You know, why do I need to focus on the in clinic setup? Well, the newer approach says that the outcomes and the OT is one part of it which is very critical but today's patients understand the concept of hospitality and more so they have options. Hence in clinic setup in clinic infrastructure is also important. Lastly one would think why do I need to give so much time to my patients if I give the time so much to the patients I will never finish my OPD. Will you write but you know what the newer approach says that the investment of time is really critical. What you're really doing at this point in time is investing your time, your chair time, which is going to play you in the days to come. So what do you get out of a patient centric practice? Right? From a short term, from a patient perspective, obviously the patient signs up for the procedure and that's a short term benefit. From a long term benefit, from a caregiver standpoint, you get more reference. Am I the one who is saying this? Not really. Even studies prove that patient centric practice really works. It helps you give you more reference, builds up trust and more so it builds a very good working atmosphere in your practice. With that background in mind, let's see how we can look into various touch points in your practice in the entire patient journey and how we can together make this a patient centric one. Right from booking an appointment to waiting launch to consultation, counseling, right up to the billing. Let's start with how we can impactfully do a appointment booking. Give multiple options to your patient when it comes to appointment booking, SMS, calling, WhatsApp, everything. The reason being most of the times the appointments are done by the sons and daughters, the caregivers. Hence it's very important that you give multiple options. Second, coach your operators to be a little bit humble on the telephone, especially when booking an appointment. Let them not sound hurried, let them not sound sarcastic. Let me give an example of sarcasm when it comes to booking an appointment and an operator would say hello sir it's 25th it's a sunday obviously we are closed sir that's a big turn off the first impression is a lasting one and in this particular case it is the front desk here is where it all happens if there's something that you can really do in your practice monday morning separate your telephone from your reception and you'll see a world of difference because you really cannot answer the telephone and attend a patient at the same time second Hire a person with a pleasant personality. It 100% works all the time. But most important of all, have them with the principle of first come first serve. Patients will really appreciate it for a long, long time. Waiting launch. They say if your check-in to check-out time for your patients for a primary examination is more than 90 minutes, your patients are probably doing two things. One is visiting the restroom. Secondly, is asking some other person in the practice, maybe the front desk or somebody else, when am I next in? Mera number kab aayega? Which is where the entire gravy starts. 
that is why appointing floor managers or liaisons are very important in these days practice to increase the patient centric concept all over again. The floor managers become the pivotal point for the patients to answer you know when, when, when are they going to be next in and also make sure that the bottlenecks are cleared up. Try different seating arrangements in your practice and it will really work out very well and will kill the boredom for everybody. And most importantly all have a person to clean your washrooms regularly and keep it really really tidy which the patients will really like as they move on and pass on the message to the others as well. Your optometrist can play a very vital role in establishing a great patient centric experience and this is what they can do. Number one, engage them into a little bit of a non-clinical conversation with your patients while they are setting it up. Tell them the purpose of each and every examination before they do so. Second, encourage them on silly small things, small things like, oh wow, Mr. Smith, you're keeping your eyes so perfect, that's awesome. Ask them proactively if there's any help they need and guide them through the next steps forward. But most importantly, ask your optometrist not to ridicule about what they feel is probably a silly question. Some patient-centric tips for consultants. Number one, address the patient by names. Number two, let there be no disturbance in your consulting room. Every time an unwanted person walks inside your room, it takes away that entire patient-centric experience and the patient begins to feel that I am less important. Next, address and involve the caregivers in the decision making place. This is just by virtue of eye contact making them feel important. And do not, do not, do not hesitate to recommend and strongly recommend a particular procedure to a patient. It will never appear as if you are selling. In fact, they will appreciate for the clarity that you have given from your perspective. Your patient counseling experience will determine the health of your practice. Hence, take a closer look at these points. Number one, have your patient counseling set up really comfortable with round table, equal amount of seating arrangements and so and so forth. Let the counselors not be in a hurry to finish up the session. The logic is very simple. Your counselors are trying to give and replace the chair time that you were supposed to give. If they do not get their share of chair time even here, then it's really not worth it. Do not multitask your counselors. It will really show up on their face and their approach that they have towards the patients and the caregivers. And make sure that before the patients leave, the counselors have clearly addressed their fears and their concerns before they leave. One of the most ignored checkpoint in the entire patient journey is the surgery scheduling, which is most ignored and this is something that you can really do well. Well, case consolidation is important, but so is patient convenience. Explain your patients why you want to schedule a surgery on a particular day and they'll really understand. Give them a valid reason. Use electronic record keeping as against diary method to reduce errors and grievances. One formula that works really well all the time in this section is under promise and over deliver. Tell them you're going to take four hours and they'll be out and surprise them by saying, hey, just three hours and your surgery is done, you're home. Three things identified by patients for a doctor as a best practice. Number one, a doctor who gives his or her own time as against making a patient feel as if he's running a fast food joint. Second, a doctor who engages a patient in a decision making process, unlike making them feel and rattling them through a to-do list. Number three, a doctor who can be got in touch with through a secure phone or email. One subject that many and most of us are out of depth is on the insurance. And here is where when you engage a person at the insurance desk, make sure that he or she is not only knowledgeable but also has some reasonably good amount of conversational skills. Make sure that this person does not ridicule or sound sarcastic when it comes to knowledge on the policies and details of that. Before the patients leave, make sure that you assure them that the documentations are going to be complete and that's something patients are actually looking forward to hear from you before they leave the insurance desk and if required guide them with the process of copay. It's a great deal if you remember a patient after the bill and hence the entire concept of after service 
in terms of patient care comes into the play. Do spend some time with your patients after the surgery is done, talking to them about the procedure and the experience that went by. It will arouse that wow quotient in them and it will help you because this is now when they will go and bring more reference for you. Be digitally in touch with the patients and also thank the patient who referred this particular patient. And finally, here are the list of additional value additions that you can bring into your practice which will definitely add up to your overall patient centric experience. Patient-centric care in COVID times? Of course, yes, never more critical. Make sure your home is ready before you invite your guest, that is in terms of your safety protocol. Use your patient contact bank to announce that you are open. Send them through SMS, WhatsApp, pictures of the safety protocols. Welcome them with a sense of gratitude. They've decided to step out of their homes and visit your practice in these times. That gratitude will show up in your body language and the patients will really appreciate it. Use teleconsultation and telecounseling for your subsequent visits and patients will appreciate that they didn't have to come to the practice. But something which you cannot neglect even in these COVID times is neglecting your staff. Because the way you behave with your staff is directly proportional to the way your staff will behave with your patients. Please do not ignore. It's really not worth it. Well, summarizing, first and foremost, Invest in patient-centric approach. It's really worth it. Second, educate your staff on this culture on an ongoing basis. But most, most, most important, walk the talk. Patient-centric care. This is the right time to start. Thanks for watching this video. My name is Shaurav Das and I look forward to working with you sometime in the days to come. Thank you so much.